So I want to give you three examples before we started some of these videos. And that's it. There's not going to be more videos of me. So basically, my videos typically are about 90 seconds. I do these video interviews. So I call it Alan Asks. And this is an example. This is one with Steve Lucas, the CEO of Marketo. Hey guys, it's Alan again. I'm here with Steve Lucas, CEO of Marketo. And the question I have for him is, if you're a new manager, how do you get your C-Lights up here? What's your number one tip for a new manager? Well, okay, everything that you've done to get into this new job as a manager is not what is going to make you successful as a manager. And you have to get your head around, it's not about you getting the trophies anymore, it's about enabling your team to get the trophies. I love that. So you're no longer an individual contributor, no more trophies, it's about helping your team get those trophies. That's it. Bye guys. So that's it. And the video, this one is a good example. It got 70,000 views, 536 likes. It's 100% organic. So one of the things we want to talk about today is LinkedIn video is sort of going through this moment right now. It's a relatively new platform. There's a lot of opportunity. Where Facebook, you get 70,000 views, you probably have to pay to promote it unless you have some massive page. This was 100% organic, 100% driven by the LinkedIn algorithm. The other videos I've done, some, this one's silly. This is me and Kobe Bryant. Um, this one's 11 seconds long. Hey guys, I'm here with Kobe Bryant, and my question for you is, what is your biggest leadership lesson? Serve, don't lead. Love it. You heard it here, serve, don't lead. So this is 11 seconds, um, but it's with Kobe. It got 2,500 likes. I don't know anything about sports, but apparently he's GOAT. <laughs> I don't know what it is either. Um, and I've also done some direct-to-camera stuff. I don't do too much of it, but like for example, when I announced that my book was coming out, I did a video of me on my stoop, and this video got 2,300 likes, 743 comments. Again, all organic, it's got about 190,000 views. I'll play this one, but you're gonna notice something. I say hey guys at the beginning of every video, and I didn't notice it until I was working on this presentation. <laughs> it's really bad. Videos. So, LinkedIn video. Um, it's incredibly powerful. So there's been, you know, I thought it was 2.4 million, there's about 3.5 million views since summer 2017. So it's been about, you know, 14 months or so. And the ROI has been really interesting. So one of the questions you have when you do this is people are like, well, like, does it really get any benefit? So I want to talk really quickly about some of the ROI that we've seen. So one is that on the customer side. So we've seen people come in as direct leads from it. The other thing that's been really interesting is just customer marketing. So this is an example of a video interview I did with one of our customers, and it made him feel really good. It got 13,000 views. It also provides social proof. So we were able to show people, hey, we have these really interesting customers. If you follow me on LinkedIn, you're able to see this. So providing that sort of human element is actually really easy. The other thing that's been surprisingly useful for is recruiting. So usually when you're recruiting a role, you send out something that's like, hey, I'm trying to hire this spot. And what we've been able to do is, for example, we were hiring for a demand gen marketer. And so what I did is I interviewed Kara, who runs our marketing team, and I just talked to her about something educational. We talked about the new Facebook algorithm. And then only at the end was it like, hey, by the way, Kara's recruiting. If you want to apply for her, look at the link above. And in LinkedIn video, you can actually post links out, and it doesn't actually hurt the engagement that bad. So you can do some really interesting things with creating content to sort of be more educational, be more value-oriented. The other thing has just been a general thought leadership bump. So we've gotten like 30 speaking invites, a lot of press. Uh, it's grown our other social platforms pretty easily too. And the other thing that's been interesting is just if any of you are authors or aspiring authors, it was super helpful for the book launch. So it sort of built up this excitement and this community around the book that I wouldn't have done otherwise. And so one of the cool things was, for example, on LinkedIn, I post a lot about my dog. He's very cute. Uh, he's a corgi, and um, so people know I'm a dog person, so when the book came out, all these people started posting photos of the book with the dog, like just organically, and I was like, this is amazing, and I started posting some of them, and then more people sent them, now there's a whole Instagram page full of pictures of people with my book and their dog, so LinkedIn video. So I want to talk a little bit about how I got started. It started kind of goofily, so one day I woke up, and I had this dream. This is completely true. 
I had this dream. I was on a hotel rooftop, and for some reason, I was with Jeff Bezos. I don't know why. And Jeff Bezos and I were talking. For some reason, at this point, Amazon had bought LinkedIn. It's a very weird dream. And LinkedIn video had just come out. I'd been thinking a lot about it. I really wanted to get into the beta. And I saw Jeff Bezos in this dream, and I was like, Jeff, you've got to let me in to LinkedIn video. And he was like, sure. And that was the dream. Now, here's the problem with the dream. Somehow, subconsciously, I mixed up Jeff Weir and Jeff Bezos. So anyway, I was like, oh, that was interesting. I should post about that on LinkedIn. I bet you someone on LinkedIn will see it and maybe give me LinkedIn video access. So what did I do? So I posted on LinkedIn, and I changed it to Jeff Weiner because it was kind of weird being Jeff Bezos. Like, that's just strange. So I wrote, I had a dream last night that I met Jeff Weiner. He gave me access to the LinkedIn video feature. I think this officially means I spent too much time on LinkedIn. Probably true. And so I posted this on LinkedIn, started getting some likes. I tagged Jeff Weiner in it. And then all of a sudden, my phone starts going like, pew, 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 pew. And I'm like, what's going on? And it turns out Jeff Weiner had commented on it. And he said, or it may mean you can predict the future. Try it now. And I was like, holy shit. <laughs> His thing got 242 likes. And my post ended up getting like, here's a screenshot. So we got a million um, views. And I wrote, update this dream has become a reality. Thanks to LinkedIn team. Follow my account to see videos I'll be experimenting with. I think by the end of the day, this post got like 2 million views. So like a really, really silly sort of origin story. But the whole idea was, OK, anytime you see a new platform emerge, there's usually a lot of opportunity very early on in the platform. And so one thing I want to go into before talking about best practices is just how intentional a lot of this has been. It wasn't just like you know me on my iPhone sort of randomly doing it. There was a lot of thought that went into it. And so that's part of why I work. So I want to talk about some best practices. I want to start with topic. So one of the things that I've seen recently on LinkedIn video, and how many people here have done even one video on LinkedIn? Raise your hand. OK, so we're at like 40% of the room. Is that a lot of people are doing what they see other people doing. Right? So there's a lot of people that are going and they're doing sort of like 90 second video interviews with random CEOs. Oh, what a terrible idea, right? No. But the issue is that it's already been done before. Right? So even though this might sound like I'm biased, one of the things you have to be really focused on is not creating something that everyone else has done before. And so if you see, for example, that someone's getting success at doing video interviews, that doesn't mean it's time to do video interviews. You have to think of something that's both novel and familiar. So like the best example of this I can give is no one on LinkedIn video yet has done um, MTV cribs for startup offices. This would be like hugely successful, right? People know what MTV cribs is. They want to see startup offices. You can make it kind of charming and fun. Like it wouldn't be that hard. So the challenge that I think you have when you think about LinkedIn video is you have to think of something that's a little bit different. Right? You don't want to go crazy, but you do want to think of something a little bit different. <coughs> the next thing that's really important, and this is hard for a lot of people in B2B marketing, is that it has to be individual centric. So if you, do, if you have a LinkedIn company page, you can now post video on LinkedIn company pages. But that's like the worst, most horrific, horrible idea ever. A, company pages don't have very good engagement. People don't really follow them that often. And B, we're living in an age where authenticity is the key on social media. Right? People want to hear human stories. They want to hear from individuals. So it's really, really important that you use people as a way, as a sort of face of LinkedIn. So what that means is I want you or I want someone on your team to sort of be that character for LinkedIn. Right? And I think a really good example of this is John, I can never pronounce his last name, Laguri, the CEO of T-Mobile, right? He's sort of the face of T-Mobile. They are able to create all this social content that obviously is authentic and human because it's video. You can see the person. They're obviously recording it versus with a tweet, anyone could be typing it. So it's really important that it's individual centric. I think this is one of the things where it can be hard to sell into your organization is, hey, you know, we really need to get John, you know, our CMO, um, to create all this content, he needs to be the face of it, and he needs to post it on his personal channel. And it can feel a little weird or awkward, so I think you have to come with case studies. t mobiles a great one of how this sort of human-first marketing is really the stuff that works in 2018. It's not going to work to just do, hey, we're company X, we're posting some videos. The other thing that's important is the length. So the sort of the rule of video is like your video really should be less than two minutes. I think it should be less than 90 seconds. 
I try now to make my videos less than 60 seconds. Anytime I've done a video longer than two minutes, it always is not good. Like, doesn't get good engagement, doesn't get good reach. Because if you think about it, you're on your phone, you're scrolling through LinkedIn, you don't really want to sit there for three minutes, but you may sit there for 45 seconds and watch a video. So length is really, really, really important. The other thing that's important is what I call focusing below the fold. So when you think about your LinkedIn post, you have the video, and then you have all the comments. One thing that I do is I respond to like, it's not every comment, but I'd say like 98% of comments, the 2% being the ones that are like kind of rude, or the ones that I don't see. Um, but basically what you find with any social channel, right, it's about building a community, it's about having a conversation. If you just post your content, literally, eventually you'll just die away. Because what happens is the LinkedIn algorithm sees, oh, you're having a conversation, this person's interacting with you back and forth, they're gonna show them more of your content. We're gonna talk more about the LinkedIn algorithm in a little bit. But it's really important that once you post a piece of content, you realize your job's not done, you have to start posting lots of stuff in the actual comment thread and have discussions and go back and forth. Okay, this is a really important one. What equipment do I use? This is the equipment. <laughs> this is it. There's no fancy microphones. There's nothing. Um, I use this really cool app called DShake. It's $2.99, $3. Um, and what it does is it digitally stabilizes the video, kind of similar to if you had a stabilizer. A good stabilizer is like 150 bucks. So this is a good deal. You should buy it. Um, and all it takes is literally on your iPhone, you just upload the video, it stabilizes it, you export it, and you're done. So this is a really good purchase. And if you have the slides, the link is on the bottom. The other big question people have is lighting. So what kind of lighting equipment do you use? And this one is a little bit tricky. It's called a window. <laughs> so the easiest video hack of all time is if you want to have good lighting, stand in front of a window and film this way, right? You don't want to be backlit. Don't use indoor lights, use natural light. You're gonna look like way better. If you look at my videos, you can sort of tell which ones are bad lighting, because it's like, whoa, Alan looks like he didn't sleep. And then you're like, wow, Alan sleeps so much. So you want that second version, right? So doing it in front of a window is the easiest, lowest cost hack. Also, most of these iPhone cameras are super high quality, but they are pretty light sensitive, so just perform better in situations with lots of light.